Thank you. Uh, well, it looks like this is an exceptionally densely attended session. Well, we will enjoy ourselves then. Okay, I'm going <coughs> in the next 15 minutes. <coughs> sorry, I'm going to convert you all in radio astronomers. <coughs> Why I'm going to do that will be clear from my presentation. But for the first. Uh, with the first slide, I would like to underline that I'm presenting this stuff on behalf of a rather large group of collaborators. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, large group of uh, collaborators from several countries, Netherlands, Poland, China, Germany, and uh, several others. So, uh, the case for ultra-long wavelength, wavelength astronomy from the moon. Let me begin from reminding that astronomy over its several thousand years history uh, had two revolutions. The first was related with the name of uh, Galileo Galilei who was the first to use an instrument to observe something on the sky. Before that people of course gazed on a uh, starry sky without any instrument. He was the first instrumental astronomer. That was the first revolution. But then, uh, 350 years later, something like that, uh, the second revolution began. That was broadening of the spectrum of the observed emission from the sky. Uh, before that, people saw sky only in optics, and that is very narrow band in the electromagnetic spectrum. From the end of 19th century, uh, began uh, um, broadening of the astronomy research, first to ultraviolet, then radio, that's the main subject of my presentation, later X, infrared, gamma, so almost everything, almost, but not quite. Not quite because the, strangely enough, that strangely enough that the uh, easiest part of the spectrum, easiest in terms of technology, that is longest wavelength, is still not in use for astronomy. That is, these are frequencies below 30 megahertz, so roughly speaking, longer than 10 meters. I'll explain why that happened. And our intention is to conclude this second revolution by going to this last unexplored window of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, ironically, radio astronomy began uh, 84 years ago, in fact, the exact date is known, May 5, 1933. And here is the proof. This is a front page of New York Times. And you can see here this left column. Here it is. New radio waves traced to center of Milky Way. That was discovery made by chance. Uh, Karl Jansky, not the astronomer, engineer, but very well educated engineer. And Ironically, he observed at that same range of frequencies, which he still do not master up to now. Very interesting uh, start, and we finally want to continue. Here is the spectrum. A very broad view on the spectrum, going from 0.1 nanometer wavelength, that's of course X and gamma ray, all the way to kilometer wavelength. So in each and every part of the spectrum, we can name a lot of scientific instruments doing something for studies of sky, except here. Why? That's because sitting on this planet, we are under a very thick ionosphere. And ionosphere is just not transparent for uh, radio waves longer than, roughly speaking, 10 meters. What was observed by Karol Jansky then, in 1933, was kind of blurred image of something toward the center of our galaxy. But it is not sufficient to study a source through this very non-transparent <coughs> uh, uh, layer of um, plasma over Earth. It's more or less like observing uh, in optical domain not even through normal window glass, but through something uh, used in, uh, well, for example, in Japan, it's a paper which is uh, uh, practically non-transparent. You see some brightening if you look um, towards sun, but no more than that. So, uh, once again, our intention is to go into this 
terra incognita. And of course, to go there, yeah, well, this is a, a just illustration of what's happened uh, at these uh, long wavelengths. Here is the ionosphere, and it is not transparent. In fact, it works as a perfect reflector, which, well, not perfect, but just reflector, which, which allows us to establish uh, long wavelength uh, communication uh, to uh, areas which are not in direct um, visibility on the surface of Earth for communication purposes. And also this is used, for example, for early warning systems. Um, the um, e emission from one antenna to another goes with reflection in the inner layer of ionosphere. There were many attempts to build a facility able to look in the universe through this window. Here is far incomplete list. I show this only to, to indicate the multitude. Don't go in the details. However, since 2015, a group of enthusiasts in Europe and China uh, is engaged in preparation of real mission related to the uh, next Chinese lunar mission, Chang'e 4. And I will give just brief, very brief, just one, two maybe slides related um, overview of that. Uh, there is another incentive of doing um, radio astronomy from beyond ionosphere. And here we will come closer to the topic of this session, talking about moon. This is a problem related to the human-made radio frequency interference. These are measurements taken by uh, this um, uh, satellite uh, with a, a waves instrument, um, a wind satellite with um, instrument called waves, um, showing the level of uh, interference at different, different distances from Earth. 40 Earth radii, 9357. And you see that uh, at this distance from Earth, the level of interference is way lower than here. Still, non-zero, but certainly much better. Well, all we are responsible for producing all this radio frequency interference with all these gadgets in our, in our pockets like that, we are very noisy. And the, these gadgets, although designed for other purposes, emit, whether we want this or not, at those long wavelengths. So one option to do radio astronomy without ionosphere and also without uh, impact of radio frequency interference is to go away from Earth as far as possible. However, there is a better way. We can actually hide somewhere in space. Where to hide? Well, the most immediate and the closest option is to hide behind the moon. Moon is non -trans not transparent for uh, radio waves. And uh, if we look on the sky at frequencies of our interest from behind the moon, we will be very, uh, f we will be in a very favorable position in terms of radio frequency interference. By the way, if you are interested to get some uh, uh, artistic impression on the level of interference, just watch, uh, sorry, watch uh, several first minutes of the famous movie Contact. There is very, just, just first minute actually, there is very interesting and uh, telling illustration of the problem of RFI in space. So, uh, as I said, the other option to fight the RFI is to hide somewhere behind the moon. Here is an example obtained many years ago, uh, well, 40, more than 40 years ago, um, with the satellite almost forgotten called RAE. Um, uh, also, uh, this satellite was equipped with uh, uh, radio receivers uh, of uh, our frequency band. And you can see um, 
the reading of this receiver uh, during the phase of the mission when satellite was approaching moon from behind and going uh, in the part of the trajectory behind the moon here. This is uh, ingress, this is egress, and behind the moon you can see that the level of interference is visibly better. So, moon is very attractive for uh, conducting radio astronomy just as a shield. So I'm sorry uh, for those who come here to uh, think about the moon as a subject of interest. For us, frankly speaking, it's not. It's just a very simple shield from what we don't want to get in our receivers. Well, having said that, in fact, there is a great deal of synergy between what we can do uh, using moon as a shield with what can be done with our instrumentation studying moon itself. So there is an excuse. So uh, with this in mind, for many years we are dreaming about um, conducting at least a demo experiment at the ultra long wavelength uh, domain in the interest of astronomy. So we, in simple words, uh, words, want to conduct pioneering study in the window which so far is closed for us. And there might be a long list of specific targets. What do we want to do for science? Well, I hope that in this audience there are not that many people who are responsible for the budget of space agencies, because they love to get a very detailed, specific list. We will make two and a half great discoveries. We will have 17.3 discoveries, which are good, maybe not pioneering, and exact number of papers published for this and that topic. Well, if you want, I can go in these details, but that's not the right way to go, in my opinion. Because, uh, in, as known from history of science, Discovery of unknown, that is the main thing which brings most interesting results as long as you are able to open up the parameter space of your uh, investigation. And in our case, that's exactly the situation we face. We do not know what's going on at frequencies which we did not even uh, touch so far. So. For those who are interested in specifics, well, I can go in long list. For example, evolution of universe, dark ages, etc. Uh, uh, two minutes, no? Um, or uh, uh, studies of the distribution of radio emission on the sky. Well, all that uh, would require a mission with this kind of wish list uh, specifications. Here is, the, here is the list of wavelengths, corresponding frequencies, with some in imaging capability, and certain spectral resolution allowing us to study potential spectral lines. We began doing something specific for that, demonstrating this technology. And as I said in the beginning, technology is extremely simple. In principle, can be done even by uh, dedicated school children. Well, not exactly, but, but pretty close to that. And we conducted some demonstration experiments in the field uh, using simple antennas like this. Now they are space qualified uh, uh, antennas. And we intend, uh, under all these uh, logos and uh, collaborative pictures, including even uh, royal family from the Netherlands and president of China, they actually signed an agreement between two countries to go ahead with this project. We intend to build in reality this demonstration and hopefully it will fly, uh, will be launched next year with this very simple antenna, not this one, this is communication. And these, two, uh, these three roads are antenna which we built. Hopefully at the next meeting we will be able to show some results along lines of these concluding remarks. Thank you very much.